On Tuesday morning I was up with a lark. Thought I'd take a walk in my local woods and not a park. Well guys, it's a lovely morning. Um, slightly foggy, you know, very thin fog. I haven't got a GoPro with me today. I sort of have a little wander through the woods. Looks very nice. Um, I'm going to pan the camera around in a second or two. A few thoughts, obviously later. Um, whatever else happens to come to mind. I'm out here with a doggy. And if I pan round, right, just the other side of that embankment, it's a lake. You can see just up there, there's a path. And of course there was a sign just in front of it, which has been taken down. Uh, Kent Highwood Project are trying to stop people from going up that path, because what, what it's having a habit of doing is uh, weakening the dam. And if the dam is weakened, the banks will burst and they will lose the lake. The very thing that we fought to save, or part of it. Um, rain forecast later today, and I tell you what, it really is a spiffing morning. I mean, you know, it's, there's no sun, which actually makes it feel just that little bit better. You know, sun sometimes is nice, but it can be a bit sort of um, bearing on the, on the system. Anyway, I'm going to be on the lookout for some wood because I want to do a little bit of carving later. Not sure what I'm going to do. And just have a wonder. I shall come back to you in a minute, guys. Uh, I'm just going to go up this path. This is a path that was made by Kent Hellwood Project. There's a better way of getting onto the lake. Um, and as you come over the top, you can see the lake there. And the lily pads are coming into bloom as well. So, I'll be back in a minute, guys. As you can see around here, I've been here, but this is where I actually severely cut my hand the other week. Um, plenty of timber still around, plenty of wood. And I found some wood for a project. I'm going to cut a piece of that birch off, cut it about there. I've got a couple of projects in mind, and uh, it's just what I was after. I didn't particularly want to use um, sweet chestnut as it splits, splits out too easily when you're carving it. It splinters a lot. Um, haven't seen that a lot to have had an open fire today, but I'm not, not going to have one. I'm going to cut what I need and then move off onto my usual area. So there we go. Well, guys. Um bit of deer sign here, well used piece of deer. We've got a lot of deer in these woods. Um, I don't know how it's going to be affected by the building work. I think it might concentrate them more, but I say that's a classic piece of deer sign. Um, yeah, it would be nice to catch a sight of a deer today. Sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. Oh, if you look over there in the deep distance there's a young, a young elfie dog. Yeah, he's enjoying himself in the woods today, as I am. Well, I'm just having a little wander around my little area and some found some interesting fungi. Not sure what this is. Um, have to have a look. Some bit more on fungi in a minute. Uh, a couple of weeks back in the paper or on the BBC News website, there was a bit about a, a policeman telling some children off uh, building a den in the woods. Um, got nothing, I can't see nothing wrong with building a den in the woods, but what I do not like is when they, some people have to chop down trees, as here, this was done a couple of years back, these uh, hollies were locked down, so was that sweet chestnut. I've come round that birch there in the middle, was locked down. And all to make that, that was a den that someone had made. It was made with live wood, not dead wood. And that's the thing that really annoyed me. Some of the trees growing back now, that's the amazing thing with, uh, with broadleaf trees, they do coppice well. But that's not the point. You know, if you're going to build a den in the wood, you use what's available, not chopping down trees. Anyway, end of little rant. 
Yeah, it's quite nice here, very peaceful. Just the sounds of the 21st century in the distance, house building. And somewhere in that lot is this little doggy. That's the pine tree that comes down the other week from another angle. Right, whoops, uh, I'm going to attempt to split this piece of wood out. Um, I know what I want from it. And I'm hoping to be able to get a couple of blanks out of this for some a couple of projects. And well, look, it's a bit knotty, but you know, beggars can't be choosers, so I've got to go across the pith, obviously, because the pith otherwise will. Right, let's try across there. Straight down a pit. Great, first time. Right. Have a look. This might give me what I need. Let's have a quick look. Splitting out very well, actually. I'm quite pleased with this. Right, it's a bit of a twist in it, but I think I might be able to get what I want out of it, which is. I'll split it down there. I'm after a knitting needle, primarily a knitting needle. Of course, the knots don't make it. The knots makes it very hard to get what I want. So I'll try down there. Yep, I think I'm going to get it out of this piece. It's going to have to require a little bit of work, a little bit more work than I anticipated. But yeah, I think that'll do. I should be able to get something out of that. It'll be a slightly twisty netting needle. I shall chuck that over there, and I'll see what I get out of the rest of this. Um, obviously, with birch, try and save the bark comes in useful like for uh, lighting fires and what have you um, and I've got another piece there might be able to make a bit of a bowl or a couple of spoons out of it it's a bit knotty though that's the trouble it's a bit knotty so I'm just going to put that to one side and of course the donk was a fine piece of uh, sweet chestnut and my trusty throw Anyway guys, I've split it out, I'm going to go and I've got a tea brewed up now. I'm going to go and sup that and examine the piece of wood and I shall come back to you in a minute. So I've got my brew, got the piece of wood, um, got a little twist in it. A piece of the bark has already fallen off, I'm just going to pull that piece off and this piece up here. Keep the bark. You shred it up and it makes great tinder for fire lighting. It's got a lot of oils in it. Um, what I'm hoping to do at some point in the near future is to, uh, as I mentioned in the last video, is I want to make some birch tar. Um, it is possible to do it. Um, I've made it before, but I want to try a different process as I mentioned. But that's by the by and that was in the last video. Using my trusty jack law again. I've got a couple of other knives. I'm not a knife junkie as such. I've been given and bought a few knives in the past and I've got enough. Uh, you only ever really need one, maybe two knives. I think if you're going to do plenty of carving, you need, um, though the jack law is a very fine knife, but most bushcraft knives are, they tend to be a bit thick in the spine for close carving. So I have a tendency to use the uh, um, more a clipper or more a companion. Slightly thinner spines. 
or even a slide knife, an Eric Frost or more slide knife. Now all we've got to do now is to start trimming off. This little area is full of wood shavings. Um, talk about leave no trace, there's plenty of trace here, but there's no fire trace. Um, don't often do the open fire. Um, quite, uh, I suppose after a period of time, I, I love an open fire and I will be doing some because I want to do some cooking. I want to cook, I want to cook bannock over an open fire. It only tastes, tastes really well done like that. And of course, bacon and sausage and a few other bits and pieces. I, like, I do like cooking open, open fire. I do like the open fire. But I always question the need of having of having an open fire within this within this environment. You know, it's, um, it's often not needed. I'm trying to find a place to plant this netting needle. I don't don't want it particularly big. It's going to take a while to uh, trim the wood down. I watched an interesting video. Uh, of Morse Kahansky of about, I think about 10 years ago, no, about 13 or 14 years ago. And out there, the bark on the um, cottonwood or po black poplar grow really thick. I mean, the piece of bark he had was about like that, very corky. Um, he actually carved a spoon out of it and a head, head in profile. Quite interesting to watch. And I, like, I just love his presentation style. So, so good. And he is the, I suppose, the, god, the godfather of this bush arts, bush crafts type thing. Um, anyway, guys, I'm going to turn this off for a bit. I'm showing you what I'm doing. Uh, using that, me old Jack Law. Fits nicely in the hand. He's done a very fine job on this. Um, I suppose the only thing I wouldn't have had was the lanyard hole. I'm not, I'm not a great. The only time I would use a lanyard is if I was using this over water. Um, other than that, I don't like anything dangling off the back. It gets in the way and gets hooked up on stuff, and you don't want your knife hooking up. Anyway, guys, I'm going to turn this off for a bit. I'll be back in a little while for a bit of a bushcrafty chat. Um, You've all, I've already given a hint of what I'm going to be talking about and a few other bits and pieces. I just want to whittle away and enjoy my time in the woods. So, I'll see you on the next sequence. Right guys, I've just spent the last hour, hour and a half, a couple of hours, um, making that little plank. Um, you can actually split it out and make the job a lot shorter, you know, if you've got a more of a knife and and actually cut the plank quite thin but I was looking for something meditative as well and it's nice carving it down getting it to the thickness you want it's a little bit thick I might shave it down a bit more but I'm at the stage now it's only a small knitting needle where I'm going to have a sharp end and a blunt end or a sharp end and a blunt end you know but I don't know yet um, I'll be carving a little bit out there and also part there. <coughs> it makes a sort of bobbin. Um, there are other ways of carving netting needles. Um, basically you can carve in that end and that end so you basically wind the cordage around and use it that way. But I'm making a traditional type netting needle. Um, as with anything, you can buy these on eBay. You know, out of plastic and various sizes. Whoops, I've got myself called. Out of various, um, out of various sizes. Um, <sighs> takes the fun out of it. You know, it's not. It, to me, that's not making your own netting needle. You get the size you want, more or less. It's a little bit broader than I wanted. I'm going to work on making a narrower one. Um, and you get a satisfaction of something you've made yourself. So not only you've got to make the net yourself, you've actually made the tool to make the net. 
which is a lot more fun. Um, I've got a kettle on the go. I'm going to have a lunch break in a minute. Um, it's been a pretty good day out in the woods. Uh, very quiet. Um, I heard some dog walkers down down the bottom there somewhere earlier. I have to take the glasses off when I'm carving, so I can't really see much at a distance. Um, it's been pretty good. Uh, an acquaintance, a YouTube acquaintance and Facebook acquaintance, Patrick, who just started making some knives and he lives up in Scotland, up in Angus, was sort of decrying the fact that he doesn't go to you know, all the um, meetings and get togethers and gatherings of Dan Sarp as he put it. I don't go to many. I go to my Woodlaw, or not Woodlaw, Wood Smoke, Wood Smoke courses um, up in the Lake District and in Scotland. I enjoy them. It's, for me it's a get together with some like minds and there's only about 16 of us at the most. Um, sometimes there's a lot less depending on what sort of course he's running. Um, I prefer that. I meet with some familiar faces and I meet with a great group of people. Um, meeting a hundred or so people is a bit of a art. Though someone said it isn't a testosterone fest, often it is. You know, you get all these guys together and from what I can gather they're comparing knives and axes. Around the YouTube world, well, I've been watching a few videos. Um, I watch them at work. I can cache them on my uh, Kindle and see some pretty funny sights. I've uh, been watching Moore's Kahansky, a great guy. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, got his own unique presentation style. He must be getting on a bit now. Um, I watched him making a cattail doll and netting noodle which has given me the idea to do that um, and in general pretty good um, as I say making a netting needle it's getting away from as a chap on, on, on Facebook he's leaving a lot of the um, bushcraft groups basically because they just turn out to be kit best you know it's people are going out and they're just buying kit and whoa I'll be back in a bit. <clears throat> Sorry for the interruption. Uh, kettle come up to the boil and I'll to make some tea. Uh, we've got a couple of other bits of wood down there. Uh, might try and make some sort of bowl maybe. Um, definitely a spoon is in there somewhere and maybe a teaspoon. Um, as I was saying, <clears throat> plenty of videos out there on technique. But a lot of it is involved around kit. Um, okay, we do need equipment. There's no getting away from it. And you can't you can't go out into the woods. You can go out into the woods with very minimal gear. But I was watching a video by Paul Kirtley on what he takes for a day hike. He actually takes quite a bit of kit. And a lot of it is very sensible kit he's taking. He's got waterproof. He's got a bit of extra clothing just in case he gets stuck out overnight or he he gets he, he miscalculates where he is. No one is ever lost as far as I'm concerned. You know where you are, you're somewhere in the woods. You're just not sure of your position. Um, and he he's got all sorts of bits and pieces there. Enough in case he gets stuck and he has to stay out overnight, he's there overnight and he can it won't be ultra comfortable but <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, but he will be okay. Um, in fact, I, if you look at his, his, his Paul Curtis blog, Frontier Bushcraft, there's bound to be a link through it from there somewhere. Really great guy. Um, I've been on one or two of his courses when he was with Woodlaw, and nice, nice chap, as I say, and very sensible when he comes to writing when he comes to doing stuff as far as bushcraft goes. It's not it's not a, a kit fest. You know, everything has its place. It's like you're saying, he doesn't take his knife out with him every time. You know, you take a folding pocket knife because you need to cut your sausage with something. But you don't need to take all, all, all your sort of gear, your axes and that. And I tend to take a saw out with me most times because 
you might need to make a fire. The saw is, has far more value than the knife. You can't cut wood as easily with a knife. Um, but other than that, it's been pretty pretty good week. I'm getting out a bit more and I'm enjoying it. I've got plans to do some cooking. Um, it's been kicking over in my mind for a couple of months now. I want to get out, I want to do bannock. Um, the recipe for bannock is pretty standard. Uh, and I, I enjoy cooking outdoors. I enjoy rumbling up a feast. Um, it's obtaining stuff to, to cook. It's, it's so easy to um, to get instant meals. You know, you, you can get pot noodle and that. Everybody does pot noodle. Um, very old. I mean, pot noodles go back to about the, the start of the 1600s in China. Or not, not you know, the instant noodle. They, they developed instant noodles um, in, in about 1600. Um, but, yeah, it... it it's an easy thing. It's great. It's a great thing to have in the bottom of your bag, just in case you do get benighted. But there are so many other things you can cook. And there's, okay, I don't hunt, but I can always get an equivalent from work. Um, I can go to the butchery department and get something that could equate to a pigeon, or could equate to a squirrel or a rabbit. Or if I'm very, if I'm feeling very flush, um, I could go to Marks and Spencers. They actually sell game. They sell pheasant, they sell pigeon, and they do sell rabbit. And I want to go out, I want to do a bit more tracking, I want to just, and just in general, be out here. Be in the nature. In, and see what's about. Anyway guys, I'm going to sign off. I'm, my tea's brewed. I'm going to have my lunch today. I've got some, um, a little pork pie. And I've got some falafels, a couple of oranges, a lovely cake that Avalon makes. She does, she breaks me cakes every week for um, work. Uh, I have one cake a day. I try to, um, I try to, I'm trying at the moment to stem my sugar intake as much as I possibly can due to the fact that I've uh, developed type 2 diabetes and I'm coming to terms with it and I'm getting on top of the situation it's a bit of a bugger but anyway maybe some more of that and I'll do that excuse me oh, oh dear well guys I've uh, marked out a little bit roughly marked out what I, where I want to have the, uh, the centre of the needle the needle bit um, I'm carve around there and that's going to be the pointy end, that's going to be the blunt, the, uh, blunt end. Um, you carve like a little, little saddle out there. <coughs> Excuse me, I want my copper gone. <coughs> carve a hole in there and then I'm going to carve down either side. I'm using the old pick knife and basically you just score it out and then you pick it up so. like so now you never carve like that never stab like that because again the godfather Morris Kahansky he actually put a knife through the wood and through the palm of his hand once apparently um, uh, it's better if you do use a, a pick type knife um, a small bladed knife like this far far easier far more control um, it does take a while to uh, get through I sometimes use a lap table um, which I've made up myself. It's a, it's a piece of actually um, laminate flooring. I've covered it with uh, foam and then I've slipped a sleeve over it, a uh, sleeve of a um, sheepskin coat. And it's actually quite good. Anyway, guys, and this is basically what you do you just spend your time carving it out, being careful not to stab yourself.
Yep. Yeah, I've just been lying down, relaxing after my uh, my lunch. I thought I'd get back to doing this again. Doggy's a little bit annoyed because I forgot to bring some lunch with me for him. So it's um. You have to do this quite gently. Uh, I would not advise using um, sweet chestnut for this because it splits out too easy. Uh, the woods I would use for this would be, say, lime, very good for carving, maybe maple, but definitely birch. Birch because it's quite easy to get a hold of. <coughs> Of course there is joy, you know, once, as I was saying earlier, you, you, if you make a net with this, you know, you've got the joy of actually everything you've done, you've made yourself. It would be good to actually make your own cordage, but that can take a long time and actually getting the cordage fine enough. Um, I've seen someone do it, there's a guy called John Ridgeon, he's actually made a, a, a net out of out of uh, lime cordage but again if you want a book which has got some really good pictures of, of um, cordage in it it's uh, Hilary Stewart's North Fishing Techniques Fishing Techniques of the Native North West I think it is really really good book and the nettle cordage in there is something to be I mean, it's amazing to see. You just slowly do it. You don't rush these jobs. These jobs are, are campfire jobs, really, you know. You're sitting there and you're under the tarp, if it's raining or whatever. But, or even sitting indoors jobs, you know. Well, or, or, as far as I'm concerned, I'm sitting in the garden. And you're just busy whittling away. Luckily I found a pen in the back of my rucksack. Ideally you should always carry a pencil with you in case you do in case the carving bug does become does bite you while you're out. Because though we can do stuff by eye, it's a lot easier if you can actually draw out a pattern. You need to just keep whittling away until you see daylight. Be very careful. Once you... You will soon get to... So look out for a video. I've never actually made one. Morris Kahansky does a... a, a Thing called a tri stick, and it's all the cuts you use on bushcraft on a long, excuse <coughs> me, on a long stick. That's your more nice I think. Can I see daylight? Oh, I can see daylight. Yes, I am through. Yep. So if you look through there, you can just about see daylight by what one way. Mash up. 
put the blade in off. But there you go. Anyway, guys, I'm going to turn this off and I'm going to enlarge this hole, do what I need to do, and then make the pin. <coughs> well, there we go, guys, the uh, netting needle. I've got to make a gauge. The gauge is normally just a bit wider than the needle. Um, you can use things like credit cards, but I should probably carve one up when I when I have the time. I've got a number of gauges indoors anyway. Uh, not quite the way I wanted it to turn out. I wanted it slightly longer and a bit narrower. But I enjoy carving this. Um, the most difficult part is when you're carving that part. Is trying not to go straight up. Um, there's many a netting needle ended up on the fire just because it's split out there and uh, and the splits run up there. Um, all I've got to do now is take it home, run some grass paper over it to smooth out the uh, sharp edges, all the burrs in there. Always a little bit of pain. Um, just two knives used, the uh, Jack Law knife to do all the rough work and the uh, Ben Orford pick knife, which is an excellent little tool. I'll buy, probably do a review on that in a bit. Well, not today anyway. Um, it's almost home time. I'm going to wind, pack up my gear and wend my way home. Uh, anyway, as I said, that's the netting needle. Useful piece of kit. Make one, find yourself some... Um, I'm going to try and net some... Um, braided... I've got some braided fishing line. And I'm fancy making a, a net out of that. But anything, uh, get butcher's twine, anything can do. I've used the jute twine that you get in garden centres and it's incredibly tough on your hands when you're netting. And it's quite furry as well, quite hairy thing. Really tough. But anything in the way I called you to do, get out and practice. Um, I will do a video on how to set the netting system up. You know, how to, how to net. But anyway, see you later guys. Um, hope you enjoyed all this video and all this... Butchering or not, I do.